welcome to the channel thank you everyone for tuning in now in today's video as you can see in front of you i've got christopher ward to review but this is no ordinary christopher ward this is in fact the brand new model which they have just released it's the new iteration of the c65 now before i show you guys the watch I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about the box. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have actually seen the packaging for Christopher Ward. But in case you haven't, just to give you a quick overview, you do have a cardboard sleeve which covers this really well made box. I have to say it is made extremely well and it feels really good in hand. You've got this coated hard sleeve. Uh, I think it's made out of cardboard, but it's got some really nice coating on there which gives it a really soft feel. And once you do remove this sleeve, you get this really nice... Uh, wooden box now inside you'll find your warranty card which is backed up by Christopher Ward's 6060 guarantee which is 60 days to return the product if you change your mind and 60 months worth of guarantee you also have a long cardboard sleeve which actually holds your cleaning cloth and then of course where the watch goes now one thing notable about this box is and I think which does add to its luxury is the way it does close. It is slightly magnetized. So when you do close the box, you'll feel the magnet just pulling and sealing the box. Really nice, but I know that's not why you're here. So let's put this box away and show you the watch in hand. And here we go. This is the brand new C65 version. Now, as you can see with this model, it is slightly different to what Christopher Ward usually make. This watch has taken direct inspiration of dive watches from those 1950s. So it's full of that vintage retro character. It still has some recognizable features from the old C65 uh, and it's got some really new ones. It also has a slightly newer case, but I'll go into all that within the review. I'm going to warn you guys that this review is going to be packed full of detail, a lot of information. So sit back, get your drinks and snacks, and I hope you guys enjoy the review. So as I said, this is the new iteration of the C65. It is a retro-inspired dive watch. Now, as a result, they have decided to name this model the Aquitaine, which, if you guys know, it is named after the historical French coastal region, which was actually home to the famous Jacques Cousteau. Now, in line with that, I am wearing my Seaston Doxa Homage. So back to the C65 Aquitaine. They've got some really interesting color choices. This watch does come in a total of three different variations. The first one you can see, which is in hand, does come with the SW201 movement. This is available for around £895 to £1,075, depending if you get the bracelet version. Now, they also have another version, which is a CMOS Sunburst style dial. And that also comes with a strap option, again, starting at 895 and with a bracelet going up to 1075 They also do a GMT version, which is a nice combination between blue and cream. Um, that is the SW3302 movement, and that starts at £1,120. And they have given us a C65 bronze version with that catchy sunray blue dial, and that comes in at 1095 and it does have the SW201 Cosk certified movement. So they've given us a fair bit of variety. And I think what's interesting in the pricing option is that the bronze Cosk certified version is only around 20 to 30 pounds more expensive than the one I have in hand. So you can get a Cosk certified movement within this range for similar money for the normal one. So let me run through some of the dimensions. You do have a case diameter of 41 millimeters, an overall depth of 12.5 millimeters, You've got a new shortened log to log of 46 millimeters. However, with the male end links on the bracelet, that does come to around 51.2 millimeters. You've got a nicely sized seven millimeter crown. The log width is 22 millimeters and the bracelet does taper down to 16.5 millimeters at the clasp. And you've got an overall weight with all links at around 155 grams. In terms of specifications, this is a pretty spec'd out watch. Now from the old C65, they have upgraded the water resistance to 200 meters. And of course you get a screw down crown with that and a screw down case back. You've also got the full 316L stainless steel case construction, including the bezel, crown, case back and bracelet. The watch does feature a new box style sapphire crystal in line with that retro theme. You also have a loomed sapphire bezel insert, which is nice and lovely curved. Again, in line with the retro theme, and they have taken direct inspiration from the 50 Fathoms for this one. Now, as I already mentioned, the movement in this one is the Swiss Salita SW201 movement. It is a 26 joule movement with a B rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour. 
It does have a power reserve of 38 hours, a rated accuracy of plus or minus 12 seconds a day up to 30 seconds a day. And that's for the unregulated base version. Now, this one in particular is running at around plus eight seconds a day with a very healthy amplitude and a B error of 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. And I think what's worth noting is that the SW200 one is a updated version of the older SW200. They did update that due to the ratchet wheel issue where the teeth on the wheel would grind down so you couldn't hand wind the watch. Now that being said, has the SW201 uh, fixed that? From what I found out on the forums that they really haven't fixed uh, that fault. Um, but you know, it shouldn't deter you from the movement. The only advice that is given is when you do wind the watch, wind it without so much aggression. Um, you know, do it quite nice and slow. Don't apply too much torque because that's a factor which does affect that ratchet wheel breaking down. So that being said, it is a reliable movement, it's Swiss made, uh, and of course you have the option of getting the COSC certified movement if you want the movement to run very, very accurately. Now with this movement, it is quite easy to regulate, uh, it's not that difficult, so if you get the case back off, you can regulate that yourself. Now let me bring attention to the dial and what we see in front of us. So you've got a good combination between this cream colour dial, those darker hour markers and this lovely green bezel. Now what you'll notice is first and foremost the logo Christopher Wood have changed the offset text that you should see on the dial and they've gone with the double flag logo just below the twab which I think will please a lot of people looking at this watch. Below that you've got the printed text which states automatic 200 meters and just below that on either side of that miniature marker you've got Swiss made. Now directly above the six you'll see this nicely tapered date window. Now I do like the fact that they've gone away from the three o'clock date window and gone with a 6 p.m. one and I think most people agree it gives the watch a more symmetrical look. The date window is subtly finished. You've got some very subtle beveling to the edges just to make sure it looks finished and gives that added quality to the dial. Now the applied hour markers are a mixture between triangular, circular and these elongated sort of batons which do taper. And these are featured at the 6 and the 9 p.m. position. The markers themselves do have polished silver frames which helps reflect the light gorgeously. They are well placed and perfectly aligned. You can also see the printed minute track around the dial. Now when we move on to the handset, you'll see that it's equally well finished. Going from the arrow tip, you can see this beautifully chamfered, really nicely polished on either side, giving it a blade-like appearance. Moving on to the minute hand, again, you see that chamfering and the polishing present. So the hands are really well done, great polishing present. And what you'll notice is the proportions are near perfect. The minute hand extends well over the hour markers. And you also have the seconds hand, which does touch that minute track around the edge, which I think is the preferred choice for people. It gives the watch dial a really balanced look and great proportions. And of course, with the date window being at six, really good symmetry. So let's have a look at the loom. As I stated earlier, the bezel is a curved sapphire style bezel. It gives you added protection above the ceramic style bezels. And I think it's a really nice blend between that top hat sapphire crystal and this sapphire bezel. And of course, this was a standout feature of the dive watches from the 1950s. And the main one being the 50 fathoms, which they have stated that they have taken inspiration from when looking at the bezel. Now, the style of bezel is a coinage style bezel, not that different to the previous C65. You do have a 120 click unidirectional bezel present. So in terms of the rotation, it is quite audible, as you guys can probably hear. Very precise, you get a tactile feel from it. Great resistance as well, it's not too loose and not too stiff at all. I am struggling somewhat with the gloves, but I think with that gloves, uh, it works perfectly fine. You've got some great grip around that coin edge bezel. In terms of alignment, uh, it is slightly off, as you can see from the 12 o'clock marker. It sits on either side. Um, I'm sure that is still well with intolerances. Uh, that is a point I like to make. Everything is built with intolerances. But that issue, you will not see that on every single CW. Um, and I'm not sure if this is particularly a review model. 
that's why it's off i realize the main production when it goes live will it have this issue i'm not too sure do you see these bezels sometimes they hit the marker sometimes they don't you know at arm's length it isn't too obvious but yeah it is just slightly off now of course the main beauty when it comes to this watch is this light catcher case and i mentioned in the dimensions part of the video that they have changed it just slightly they have shaved off one millimeter from the log to log giving you an overall log to log of 46 millimeters from the side of the watch and they have gone with that beautiful light catcher case now i really do like this case i love the defining lines that you can see here that transition between those brushed logs and that beveled polished edge is just beautiful so cleanly done very nice and satinized brushing present and which then moves on into the side of the case which again is beautifully brushed and that transitions back into a highly polished underside of the case and that's present through both sides of the case very nicely done and i really do appreciate this feature i'm seeing it on a lot more cases micro brands homage watches etc everyone's doing it and i think it's a really good thing to see on watch cases the crown is around seven millimeters uh, a really nice size for a crown as you can see there are no crown guards which makes the crown really easy to grip and function as you saw the christopher ward logo on the crown it is signed a uh, polished logo with a bead blasted background You've got some really tight splines present which does aid grip definitely and the absence of those crown guards makes the crown function even easier now you'll also notice this red bit on the crown for guys that know it is an added safety feature to remind you if your crown is ever undone um, the crown function with crystal ward watches is really nice this is my second crystal ward in hand and they've got this very buttery smooth screw down um, almost no resistance you can't even feel threads touching or catching uh, it's been machined exceptionally well so throughout the watch handling it wearing it you can definitely feel precision you can definitely feel that quality that Christopher Ward would like to bring um, on the dial I really do like the fact that they've just gone with the logo and I think a lot of people will be pleased with that now moving on to the bracelet and uh, they have added some changes to the bracelet as I mentioned it is a 22 millimeter log width and that bracelet then tapers down to 16.5 this type of taper you usually see on a 20 millimeter bracelet maybe they should have gone to 20 millimeters because it is uh, this retro inspired dive watch and that is the most common log width you used to get but the 22 millimeter log width doesn't look huge it doesn't look disproportionate it looks quite proportionate to the case uh, you've got linear brushing present across the whole bracelet and you can see it is that satinized brushing present three link bracelets all solid links solid end links um, really nice solid milled clasp and you've got Christopher Ward stamped along the center. And of course, that pressed down clasp with the twin spring pushers. Great finishing. Now with the bracelet, you also have a on-the-go adjustment. And you can see it's that ratchet style. So you press it down and you pull out the links. And you can see that ratchet mechanism underneath. Now one of the features of these bracelets is uh, the end link removal system. You've got a twin release system here which makes uh, bracelet changes very very easy as you can see there's no drill lugs on this case so you just basically squeeze those two metal pieces here and there and off comes your bracelet so a very nice way to take the bracelet off one of the changes which they have made and it's probably not as positive as they thought it would be they have upgraded the bracelet with screwing links now while you might think oh that's a great touch but they're actually screwed in from either side and you know me guys i hate these kind of bracelets i've had a nightmare with things like the san martin rivet bracelet so i was a bit nervous to size this because this watch has to go back and i didn't want to damage it in any way uh, and i did struggle slightly so let me bring you out the links and the screws and this is what i'm talking about so you've got a double ended screw hollow on one end and that's where the screw fits i know most people will struggle with this bracelet um there is the chance of damaging the sides of the bracelet links they should have gone for the normal screwing links um without adding this double-ended screw and for the most part in my experience if the screws are really well threaded and you apply loctite they don't come undone this is definitely going to be a bit of a faff of course most people will take it to a watchmaker but if you're going to do it at home you definitely don't want to be scratching up a thousand pound watch just because you're trying to size it up um, it did take a fair bit of torque it took some uh, dexterity which i do lack sometimes when it comes to bracelets but you know that is a bit of a downside on the bracelet other than that i think the bracelet is really nice in hand very nicely finished no edginess present and you've got that satinized brushing present all over 
Another downside will be, of course, those male end links. Um, they should really have been female end links in order to complement that compact log to log at around 46 millimeters. But with those male end links, it does go up to around 51 millimeters. Now, let's put this watch on wrist and let's see how it wears. Now, here's the Christopher Ward Aquitaine C65 on my six and a half inch wrist. And it does fit really well. That shorter 46 millimeter log to log does really complement the watch and the way it wears. It adds to a lot of comfort on wrist. Uh, even those male end links don't really affect that wearability on wrist. As you can see, they do curve around the wrist pretty nicely. They don't stick out uh, and the watch sits pretty flat to the wrist. The bracelet's nice. You do get a wide taper due to that 22 millimeter log width, uh, but then it does taper really nicely down to 16 millimeters. Diameter of 41 millimeters is okay. There will always be people that say they want it in a 38 or a 39, uh, but I think it does give the watch great visibility and they also want this to be a practical dive watch. So that's why you've got a fair bit of surface area. Due to that 41 millimeters, you get a nice visual of the dial, very clean and symmetrical dial, great legibility. And even with those old radium cream color hour markers, you get really bright BGW9 loom. Now to summarize, I'm not going to comment on the price uh, because you know that is the price of these watches. There are a lot of people willing to pay a thousand pounds or thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, depending on what they want. You can easily justify it. The things I do like, um, you know, I like the bezel, although this one is just slightly off the marker. Uh, I really like the dial. I like the new placement of the logo uh, with the crystal wood text missing, and I like the date window. You know, I do like the design overall. Very nice crown function. Great detailing present, and of course, I love that light catcher case. Maybe I didn't mention the case back. That is also sapphire, uh, and you've got Christopher Ward branding present on the router. No other decoration other than that, and you've got specifications around that case back. Nothing too special, but it is sapphire, giving you added hardness. And of course, for the most part, I do really like the bracelet and how the watch sits on my wrist. Things I don't like, uh, I think the only real negatives I touched on that really is the alignment, but I'm not too fussed because I know the nature of these watches. Um, you know, you do get a bad one in the bunch. That is unfortunately how it works. The other main thing I don't really like is the screwing links. Uh, you know that one was coming. I just think they've made an upgrade to a watch, uh, but it's again, it's made it quite difficult to size yourself. You know, it should be easy. Uh, and you know, as I said earlier, for the most part, screwing links work perfectly fine as long as they are machined well enough. So I think this is a nice retro skin diver from Christopher Board, Swiss made, really good looks and great specifications. So that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. You will find the link to the Christopher Ward website within the description below. And it is also worth mentioning that 5% of all sales of this particular model will go to the Blue Marine Foundation, which is a charity dedicated to preserving ocean life. And I really like when watch brands do things with nature. Uh, we had the Draken Kruger with the National Park, and we've got Christopher Ward, uh, a big enough brand, giving back to the community and helping preserve those oceans where you love to dive. Well, thank you guys for watching and I will see you on my next video.